Good evening, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to share this uh, with you about Father's anger. It should really encourage you that Father is angry with the wicked every day. And Father is loving on us every day. So if Father is angry with the wicked every day, why are you uh, afraid to get the word out and get your testimony out? Because sinners are sinners are wicked people because they do wicked things. They don't believe in following Father's rules because they are sinners and their, their hearts have not been changed. Our hearts have been changed. Messiah paid for our sins and cleansed us. So we're not walking around with all this darkness in our chest. So just remember this. Think about this. Yahuwah is angry with the wicked every day. He judges the righteous. So he know when you're not doing things right. And he told you to come ask for forgiveness all the time. So Yahuwah's anger against the wicked or God's anger against the wicked. Who are the wicked in the scripture sense of the term? The Bible divides all the human race into two classes only, the righteous and the wicked. Those are righteous who have true faith in Messiah, Christ, whose spirit is consecrated to Yahuwah, who live a heavenly life on earth and who have been renewed by the Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. Their original selfishness is subdued and slain and they live a new life through the ever-present mercy, kindness, and long-suffering and grace of Messiah Yahushua HaMashiach. Right over against them in character are the wicked who have not been renewed in heart. They still have a hard heart with a whole lot of junk and mess in it just like I did. Who live in selfishness. They live in selfishness, in pride, in haltiness. Some of them think education makes them, makes them better than anybody else. Some think that their family they born into make them better than anybody else. Under the dominion of appetite in some of its forms, and it matters not in which out of all possible forms it may be, but self is the great and only ultimate end of their life. They're very selfish people. They don't help. They don't help. Hallelujah. But Father, move on them to share their wealth among his people. If he put it on their heart. Hallelujah. Number two. You know, who is angry with the wicked? This is the testimony of Elohim himself. This truth is also taught by reason. If Elohim were not opposed to the wicked, he would be wicked himself for not opposing them. Sinners know that Elohim is angry with them and ought to be. Else, why are they afraid to die? You see how, you know how you have been. You see how the sinners are. They fear. They are, a lot of them are full of fear. You can tell them anything. A doctor can tell them anything. They believe everything the doctors say. They believe everything sometimes that grandmama say or different ones. If you, uh, They believe what people say that have degrees. They think they know better. Hallelujah. They, they, they just don't, don't act like the rest of the people. And they think people looking at them and people not looking at them. You know, just different things that sinners do. But once you have Messiah in you, that's a whole different thing. Well, anyway, number three, the nature of this anger. Number one under this, it is not a malicious anger. Elohim never has a disposition to do any wrong in any way to any being. Two, this anger is not passion in the sense in which men are wont to exhibit passion and anger. 
reason for the time is displaced and passion ranges. Number three, your Elohim's anger cannot be in any sense a selfish anger. For Elohim is not selfish in the least degree. Positively, his anger against the wicked implies. And under number three is a number one, an entire disapprobation of their conduct and character. He loathes the wicked with infinite loathing. Two, he feels the strongest opposition of will to their character as opposed to his own character. Number three, strong opposition of feeling against sinners. In our attempts to conceive of the mental faculties of the divine mind, we are on a sort of necessity of reasoning analogically from our own minds as we have intellect, sensibility, and will. So has Elohim. From our own minds, we infer not only what the faculties of the divine mind are, but also the laws under which they act. For Elohim is not angry merely against the sin abstracted from the sinner, but against the sinner himself. The sin has no moral character apart from the sinner. It grieves and displeases Elohim that a rational moral agent under his government should array himself against his own Elohim and Father, against all that is right and just in the universe. Number five, the anger of Elohim against the wicked implies all that probably belongs to anger when it exists with good reason. Number four, the reason of you the reasons of Elohim's anger. Costless anger is always sinful. Elohim never himself violates his own laws. Found that they are infinite right and justice for his children so they will have a guideline in, in which to govern their lives. Wicked men are entirely unreasonable. Elohim has given them intelligence and conscience, but they act in opposition to both. Elohim has given them a pure and good law, yet this they recklessly violate. You know that by a fixed law of our being, nothing can be a greater temptation to anger than to see persons act unreasonably. So when Elohim looks at the unreasonable conduct of sinners, he feels the strongest indignation and displeasure. For he has given his commandments out to everybody can read his commandments somewhere. To, that's so that the sinner will know you are a sinner. If you stealing and killing, you are a sinner. The course of the wicked is utterly erroneous. No thanks to the sinner uh, if his influence does not ruin the whole world. By the very laws of mind, the sin of any one man tends to influence other men to sin. And they spread far and wide the dreadful contagion of his example. What influence can be more potent than that of example? Elohim is so good and sinners are so wicked. He cannot help being angry at them. Since in his wisdom and knowledge he knows more fully than they do the great evil of sin. By so much the world, the more is lie under obligation to be displeased with sin and angry at the sinner. The degree of Elohim's anger against sin, it ought to be equal to the degree of their wickedness and must be if Elohim is what he should be. We judge of men's guilt by their light and by their capacity for governing themselves by light and reason. Yahuwah's anger against sin is in proportion to the sinner's guilt, estimated in view of the light he enjoys and sins against. The sinners go around and say the commandments are done away with. We don't have to do the law. We don't have to keep the Sabbath. The duration of Elohim's anger, it must continue as long as the wickedness itself continues. If they turn not, there can be no abatement, no cessation of his anger. The terrible condition of the sinner against whom Elohim is angry. Look at the attributes of Elohim. Think of the case of the sinners exposing himself to the indignation of the great and dreadful Elohim. 
Look at his natural attributes, power, omniscience. Look at his holiness and his mercy. Such is his nature and such is his character, that you have nothing to hope but everything to fear. His dreadful anger against you must be expressed. But Mark, Elohim is much more opposed to sinners than Satan is. If Elohim were not angry with sinners, he would not be worthy of confidence. Elohim's anger with sinners is not inconsistent with his happiness. Elohim's opposition to sinners is his glory. Believers love Elohim for his opposition to sinners, not accepting even his opposition to their own sins. The text is to be understood as it reads. Some have supposed that Elohim is not really angry with sinners, but uses this language in accommodation to our understandings. This is an unwarrantable latitude of interpretation. In Elohim, there is a fixed, eternal displeasure and opposition against all sinners because of that great guilt. Elohim's anger against the sinner does not exclude love, real compassionate love, the love of well-wishing and good-willing. It is plain that sinners do not realize Elohim's anger, though they know it. If they do both know and realize it, they manifest a degree of hardiness and iniquity, which is dreadful. But the fact is they keep the thought of Elohim's anger from their minds. And they'll say, well, I'm human, you know, and, and nobody can be perfect. But Father's word says people can be perfect. Hallelujah. So, so why... So our job is to try to get the good news to the, the wicked sinner because Father is angry with the wicked every day. I, and I just to think he was angry with me when I was living in my sin and I didn't know that. I didn't know that he loved me in spite of my <clears throat> being wicked. Same thing with you. If you're doing wicked things and doing wicked ways, his love is there. His love is there to guide you to open your eyes so that you can see and understand and turn from your wicked ways and accept him and repent and confess your sins and ask him into your heart. So, he's angry with the wicked every day. Every day. Thank you, Father, for your word. Hallelujah. That never returns unto you void. Thank you, Father.